Okay, guys, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the first English spoken video that I do since the year has begun. I had a lot on my mind, uh, some health issues, but as I've mentioned in a previous short video, I'm back and um, I have decided to do this one a couple of days ago already, but then I had to do other videos about local stuff and um, other issues of concern. You know, this is a broad spectrum channel, but I couldn't let this one pass. Uh, there were elections in Portugal in the past uh, 10th of November, uh, I'm sorry, March. And uh, Dan uh, has a big fan of these two guys, uh, Alex Cristoforo and Alex Mercuris. Uh, of the popular channel Duran. Uh, I'm sure many of you that follow this channel know the Duran for sure. And let me know just in advance that I'm a big fan of them. But after uh, listening to uh, their analysis on a reality that I'm well aware of, uh, I, I couldn't help myself but to, uh, but to react. And so without any further ado, let's do this talk about the elections in Portugal and the mainstream media is once again saying this is the rise of the far right. I despise this left right narrative. I really do. Well, just for the first sentence, I do agree with Alex Cristoforo uh that uh, to characterize the 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 right-wing party that uh, gained the third place in the last elections but it's not completely untrue so alex should do a little bit uh, the research research a little bit deeper onto this because although i agree with him that this party i do not characterize it i've said this in many Portuguese spoken talk shows that I do on this channel that I do not characterize it as a, the typical ultra or, or extreme right uh, wing party but it has an aspect of it that a lot of his speech a lot of the, its arguments are uh, fished from the this uh, right wing discourse and also it congregates a lot of this right wing neo-nazi portuguese neo-nazi people within its hordes so but uh, i would agree that it's mostly a uh, ultra liberal and conservative at the same time uh paying lip service to a bunch of millionaires kind of party um but anyway this is the rise of the far right and they're talking about the chega party which I believe they came in third place, yep. but I'm looking at the numbers now. I, I'm not sure what place. I do believe they came in third, but the rise is is phenomenal. They, they quadrupled, went 12 by the seats way. Five years ago, to 48, to 48 seats in uh, in these elections. Not uh, um, 12 seats in 2022 to now 48 seats in the 230 seat party. Let me pause this because uh, it, it, it first he made a mistake and then he corrected it. It's not four years ago because every election should be every four year. But this election was uh, was called by the president over a scandal that made the previous prime minister resign. A scandal which ended up to be pretty much nothing. And in my opinion, it elections wouldn't or didn't have to be called by the president but this is how it happened parliament in these elections and uh they could be playing the the kingmaker i guess if if they decide to form a coalition with one of the notice that this party in the two years ago two years ago they elected 12 seats and the party that was in government had the uh, absolute majority over 50 percent and uh against all the odds of that time of, of two years ago all the 
all the surveys were indicating that the right wing was on the rise already and that uh, one of the well the social democrat on the right spectrum of the portuguese parliament was about to win and i think people got scared of that and they vote massively for the socialist party uh, and and gave them absolute majority which was spoiled by this little bit sketchy sc story if you ask me the uh the the, the winning parties uh, most likely it'll be the the center the center right party um if if they do decide to, to form a coalition then they could be in government um what, what do you think of what's happening in uh in portugal the the social democrat led the democratic alliance is the is the center right party that they could form a coalition with the other party that that uh that is pretty much even with the uh, democratic alliance is the center left socialist party so those are the two top parties and then you have chega uh, right underneath them great yes, position I to be in it's, it's a good, very good. It's, in theory, it is a very good position to be in. And of course, if things were to follow the normal democratic uh, book, well, clearly there's been a big swing to the right in this Portugal Portuguese election. No I, doubt I'm going about to come that. back to this issue of left and right because I agree with you, by the way. But anyway, there's been what is being referred to as a swing to the right. And you would expect that the centre-right party would therefore go into coalition with Jaga. That coalition would have a clear majority in the Portuguese parliament and it could provide a clear government to, the Portuguese, to Portugal, which would be consistent with what one would assume is the wish of at least a plurality of the Portuguese electorate. Except apparently that isn't going to happen because again, what we are actually discovering is that the centre right party and the centre left party, which is of course the socialists, have an awful lot more in common with each other than the centre right party does with Che. This is one of the main points that Alex Mercurius makes, which I think is spot on because this is my uh, this is has been my criticism of these two parties throughout my years as a portuguese citizen is that they they do indeed have slightly different speeches sometimes really apart arguments but in practice in, in when they are in government in practice they they do very similar policies very liberal inclined policies they have no problem in privatization of the <clears throat> of public sectors and giving more and more money to the private sector and liberalizing the labor laws and and uh, ending regulations, uh, financial, uh, or or not being against the the, the slackening of uh, financial regulations and so on and so on. Now coming to Chega, Chega, I, I've been researching you. It is a by no means unusual conservative nationalist. Catholic, I suspect, um, party. I wouldn't call it, from what I've read about it, far right. It's not apparently opposed to NATO. It is skeptical about the EU. It is deeply opposed to immigration. It is nationalist. It supports family values. And by the way, it supports Ukraine. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's got, in some ways, a set of policies which once upon a time would have been considered fairly mainstream on the right in Europe. Okay. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, well, it, the description for someone that uh, follows politics and has the minimum interest in, in, the, in this uh, can see that this 
at least this description of this party, this particular party, is at least at least a little bit strange. A party that uh, gets together, cong congregates all these ideas that Alex Mercuri just said. And, and he is right, by the way. He is right. But the conclusion, then, it's not accurate and it's not completely right. Or at least, let me be uh, humble and at least I do not agree with it. Chega congregates a lot of ideas for one simple reason. It's because it's a market survey derived party. This would be maybe the main ideology of Chega. In the beginnings, they, they capitalized on very radical right-wing ideas to capture the first uh, chunk of support among the public. But then as the time progressed and they, they realized that they needed, they, they, they were being labeled this radical party, they had to open up in a broad spectrum of course, they always demonize, demonize the left with uh, a complete bunch of lies and misconceptions about economy and policy and philosophy and in any kind you can imagine. Uh, it's really that populist. They, they go as far as to make TikTok videos complaining about speeding tickets. And so as, <laughs> as you can imagine... I'm very doubtfully they would do anything about that. And, it, and, it, and the things they are complaining about are actually, I mean, they are of everyone's awareness that if you go in an area where it says 50 and you see a, a radar warning there because the video was done within a city. And uh, if you overspeed, you risk to get a ticket. I mean, this any city has this kind of rules it's not exclusive of portugal i don't i don't like them myself but using that as campaign arguments is at is at least very revealing of what you're up to and so uh, they appeal to the old they know there is a, a group of people in portugal that are um, they romanticize with the past they want to, they romanticize with the Salazar dictators, Salazar times, who, how Portugal was so clean and tidy and all the family was so well structured, which is, which is a complete lie, which is a complete lie. Portugal is a very poor country, very stratified society. Children had to walk in barefoot. In this particular region where I live, if people had a pair of shoes, they would walk with a pair of shoes, not to wear them down. And then before they would get in some building or to take care of their own business, they would put the shoes on. So this is just a tiny example. Uh, and they show pictures of uh, how Portugal was. So this, this, this is a group that romanticizes with this kind of past. Because most, a big group in Portugal didn't even know how to read or write. This is Salazar uh, <laughs> in uh, heritage. So, and uh, the other aspect is now this, that they appeal for a very, a very liberal economy. They go all in for tax cuts, for every kind, but they never mention labor laws, never, because the ones, the people who paid them, who financed them, are not would not allow that. So they never go for this kind of worker mentality of the get together and stand for your rights. They are not the kind of worker, they, they, they just point the finger at everyone is corrupt, everyone is just feeding their own friends and family and don't care about the common worker and the common uh, person. And so we have to end all this mess and then we can cut taxes for the, for the workers, of course, when Cutting taxes would never go for the workers, would always go for the companies, among many other things. It's a mixed salad, only designed, and this is the, the, the point, only designed to grab the big, biggest slice possible of the voters. Because they, within their arguments, they even have some left wing when they claim to be beside the workers and the most vulnerable and all that shit. It's not shit, but it, it, said by them, I consider it to be. Uh, it's just propaganda. 
just propaganda because there, there's nothing really that you can grab onto in their, for example, program that uh, that can materialize that or can make that true. But it's skeptical about the EU. It's nationalist and it wants to take steps to stem immigration. Skeptical about, about the EU, I'm not that sure. Because they might mention a few things, but they are pro-NATO. They are pro-Ukraine. And so this is, in my opinion, one of those gray areas where they navigate through to get the most votes. And most of all now, they prey on the... They start preying on minorities like the gypsies, accusing them of being a burden to the state because they didn't want to work. They only lived in subsidies and all this. I tell you, for you, there are English speaking person that do not know this reality of Portugal. If you refuse to work or if you have some disability or something, or I mean, if you are unable, if no job wants you working there for the minimum wage, you get from the state about 150 euros, more or less. I'm not really aware of the most recent numbers, but it's not that much. So let me know if you can live uh, on that when a rent in Portugal, in an average rent in Portugal is several hundreds of euros for a very tiny place. So so I re I don't really know uh, about that. So they prey on the unemployment. Uh, they say that there, there are incentives for people not to work and uh, and they prey now on the immigrants that come to substitute the big substitution theory to come to substitute our cultural and prey on our women and do all sorts of crimes and nasty things. Although I admit there are problems with mass immigration none of what they accuse of what they uh, propagate as message in subsidiary in hundreds of subsidiary channels is true so that automatically means that it has to be identified as far right and that also means that the pro-eu parties the socialists and the centre-right party are fundamentally hostile to it. And it seems more likely at the moment that they will work together and try to freeze Chega out. So this is what always happens now in European elections. You get a situation where in more and more countries across Europe, people are becoming increasingly unhappy and dissatisfied with the way in which the what you might call the system parties, the parties that have dominated politics in a, any particular country for a long time. In Portugal, since the 1975 revolution, which... 1974, the, by the way. Uh, ...dictatorship of Salazar and Caetano. Anyway, um, the two parties that have dominated Portuguese politics since then, the Socialists and the Centre-Right Party, they've become very pro-European. They're both fervid supporters of the EU. They accept completely the whole framework of EU policies. Their, their, their policies of these two parties have become less and less distinct from each other. People. Alex, with all due respect, there, are, there has always been a uh, Eurosceptical party, which is the oldest political party of this, of, of, the, of all political parties in Portugal, which is the Portuguese Communist Party, which had a, a big role before and after the revolution. And these are the really Eurosceptics, which right now in every media become suppressed, become demonized, uh, even when they had many more seats in the parliament on the media you always see negative opinions about them or at least in the panels in the commentary panels 
they were rarely appearing, less and less, and they were completely erased from the picture in these elections. Uh, always uh, the the parties like Chega always used arguments like the the fall of the Soviet Union, the um, and and the mess that succeeded it, uh, all of the more Stalin and all of other. Uh, inaccuracies, historical inaccuracies, which the way they portray portray these historical events and pinning it on the Portuguese Communist Party, going as far as the the, the accusing the this party of not being Democrat when it has given every proof that it is. And yeah, and I don't know about the Eurosceptical of Chega and uh, but let me Let's play. Let's see. In Portugal, have become increasingly dissatisfied. They're probably most dissatisfied about immigration. They vote in the way that they do, signaling their disapproval of the. Immigration has been yes a big game changer in the voting decision, but I'll I'll I I will tell this. One million and a hundred thousand about voters voted for this party and i am sure i i mean i am 100% positive that the majority of these voters are pro european pro european union they didn't vote their motivation for voting chega was not portugal being in the european union at all i will assure you this 100% immigration wise not the same Immigration played yes played a big role. I live in one of the one of the regions that voted more for this party, and we have a lot of immigrants that started to come to do various jobs where Portuguese do do not work or do not do. Not because Portuguese don't want to work, it's because the wages many times and the conditions are not the best. System. And the system just carries on. Yeah, this this is without a doubt the trend. Is you end up having these centrist parties uh, combining forces and forming a, a government. I think probably the best example of that is is Germany. I would guess, where you where you end up having this 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 middle core of left right center with left right and. And in order to keep the the parties which are defined as as being on the fringes out of power, they yes. they uh, they end up uh, ruling. And every now and then they'll include a green or a green party or something like that in the mix yes. as well. But um, th this is not good for for uh, Portugal, and it's not good for any uh, European no, country it, to, to have it, these it, types of uh, of alliances, these types of coalitions. Absolutely. Now, can I just say? I mean, I'm I. I... I want to make it clear I'm not here endorsing Chega. I mean, maybe that would not be a success in government. I mean, I, you know, and maybe they would do bad things in government. But what is happening in Europe, across Europe, is that the electoral process, the democratic constitutional electoral process, is being in effect dismantled because you might vote to the right or as has just happened in a local election in Austria there's been an election in Austria in Salzburg and there a party that is supposedly an extreme left party um, a party that has been a new party working class party left-wing party says it represents old left ideas is against many of the identity issues, skeptical about immigration, all of these kind of things. They've done incredibly well in these local elections in Austria. But whatever happens, they're automatically frozen out. Now, there is an Italian concept which goes See? back to the late 19th century, the early 20th century, called transformismo, which um, I used to talk about in connection with the way Angela Merkel ran Germany. And it's also, I think, um, a good way of un understanding EU style politics, which is that you govern from what is called the centre and you exclude everything 
else outside it. You push all politics to the fringes, all real politics to the fringes. What you get at the center is not really um, politics anymore. It's a kind of administrative state which simply reproduces the sort of policies that you get ultimately coming from Brussels. Its loyalties, in other words, are to Brussels rather than to its old electorate. Now, transformism, when it was applied in Italy, it is universally acknowledged by historians who studied that period that what it ultimately caused was a radicalization in Italian politics because all political energy went either to the left or to the right. And eventually, when the system collapsed, there was no, uh, there was no center. And step by step across Europe, we're moving in that direction. And looking at Chega, well, again, as I said, I'm not saying that necessarily a party that, you know, I would be enthusiastic about. I don't know much about it, but it's not a party that you should exclude from the political system. I think you should work to exclude parties from a democratic electoral system. I mean, First of all, Alex, no one is working to exclude parties. This is how democracy, parliamentary democracy, at least in Portugal, works. Is that uh, you count the seats of every party, of uh, idea aligning parties, the left, the right, etc. And then you make coalitions or not. And the, the rhetoric of, of each force has always been hostile. But it has lost a lot of a lot of uh, politeness since this party arrived in on the scene and this party you are you are talking about has this party is some uh, somehow emerging from the will of the people against the strong powers installed in brussels that spread the octopus spreading to the countries and it's not like that this is a party financed by oligarchs portuguese oligarchs and not only, and it is a party where former centre-right, as you refer to it, has migrated from, and other uh, right-wing parties, the Christian Democrats that are extinguished in the parliament, and now they are back through the hand of the centre-right, but they were extinguished in the, in the last elections. They lost all seats. So a lot of people from Chega are made from these parties. So they do not represent a change. They represent a change of color of your clothing, but not of your mind and your ideas. Um, the big change that this party brings, it's the, the aggressiveness and the outright... Uh, and the outright use of this playbook that anything goes, anything goes, as long as you want to hear that, we will say it. I think that whole conception anyway is by definition anti-democratic and wrong. And if you look, as I said, at Chega's program, it is the kind of mainstream right-wing conservative nationalist family oriented christian policies you know overtly can by the way they are so family orientated that they uh, uh, cry out loud that they want to end the funding the millions that go from the state to the lgbt community monster which none exists and the funds that they are referring to go to protection of victims of uh, domestic violence. Catholic Christian policies, as I understand it, which once upon a time would have been commonplace in this part of the world, and which would have been... It's Catholic Christian to the point only that uh, his leader, the salesman of the company, as I call it, says that his mission was given by God. Once I, he I heard him, and the first time I heard him say this in a podcast interview, I immediately start seeing pages of centuries of 
calendars going backwards, backwards, backwards. I don't know, until the Crusades time or whatever. You can, uh, look, don't get me wrong. I do respect every creed, every religion. Really, really do respect. I know very wonderful, outstanding citizens that are religious. But this guy is just, that's just one of, one of his slogan, just another of his slogans to prey on the on the people that do like this kind of discourse that I was chosen by God. It's been sort of well, you might agree with them or not agree with them, but you could, you know, it was part of you know the tapestry of politics in Southern Europe. The Christian Democrats in Italy, for example, once upon a time, long ago, back in the 50s, they were not so different from this. But if you keep pushing people like that aside, if you insist that anybody who deviates from the Brussels line and is at all sceptical about it, they can't be admitted into the system you know we have the same in the netherlands with you know gert wilders did very well but he's still not in power you know, they're still trying to create parties governments around him rather than governments with him if you go on doing it then eventually what you're going to do is you're going to discredit the entire system of politics in europe completely which is of course exactly what happened in italy in the first half of the 20th century it's exactly what's happening now across it's exactly Europe. what's happening across now across it's, it's what's happening exactly. now, yeah while i do agree with the analysis that the the powers that be are too much enrooted and crust i don't know the, the correct maybe the most correct word to use in english they are really hung on to power and have a lot of control they do create a lot of problems to society in my view being liberalism or ultra liberalism and uh, the demise of the worker power worker union power for example has a has a tool of improving everyone's lives especially the ones who produce things and services for society uh instead of that they they create these monsters like Chega, which is, this is the, the thought that I think both Alex Christopher and Mercury failed to achieve, is that Chega is just a product of the system that is in place. They cannot allow the, 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 the anger of the people towards the system to be directed to left-wing values, to collectivist values to anti-banking, anti-financial policy, anti-liberal values, although very progressive values as well, and humanistic. They prefer this kind of groups that appeals to the past, uh, glorifies, I don't know, the Portuguese maritime expansion of the 15th, 16th century, <laughs> these kind of things. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of disinformation and and a lot of uh, lack of education within the public, which makes them very gullible for this kind of arguments. Uh, but I think the main point that both Alex Christopher and Mercury do here is that this is just a party that is representing the people and the power is trying to restrain this... this uh, this party, I I, I couldn't uh, agree less with that. He's yeah. hollowing out politics. Uh, is this to the benefit of Brussels, though? It is to the short-term benefit of Brussels. To the short term, now, yeah. Now, bear in mind... Do, do they ever see it long term? No, no, they never do. <laughs> bear in mind, the reason why Chega did so well in Portugal is because people in Portugal... Clearly, a lot of them are not happy with the politics which ultimately are being imposed on their country by Brussels. <laughs> I mean, except 
Alex Mercury is that the majority of these people do not realize that the policies that is being imposed on them come from Brussels. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep electing their local representatives, the mayors and the city halls that direct a lot of the policies that affect their day-to-day -day living. You are right. A lot of the policy in Portugal is directed by Brussels. We are completely dependent on the money that is sent by the packages, uh, the packages of Brussels to agri the common agriculture policy, the 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 recent funding after COVID and other programs called Portugal 2020 and 2030, uh, the the structural programs, the so-called structural programs. Uh, they are they are uh, they are putting Portugal on the connected to a machine on a life support machine, which without if 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 all the money that comes from Portugal, of course, a lot of it benefits other countries in Europe as as well because we are client states, right? We we buy from outside, and the only things we export is mostly based on cheap labor so it's little added value to our economy but uh, the thing is that no party can break that from one day to another especially a party like Shiga <laughs> which has bankers as their friends and supporters they're not happy with large amounts of immigration into Portugal but that's true they're not happy perhaps with some of the economic policies that the socialist governments and the centre-right governments in Portugal have been following in recent decades. They, it's a, Che Guevara is a nationalist party. There may be a desire on the part of the Portuguese people to reassert Portuguese national identity. As I understand it, Che Guevara is big on these things. Brussels, of course, opposes all of that. And the fact <laughs> is, it is a nah, pushback nah, nah. against Brussels, but it's a pushback against Brussels that Brussels will neither learn from nor accept. They won't modify or change or adapt their policies to take into account what... Look. It is not a pushback against Brussels. I would love to have a live conversation or even a recorded one with this um, with these two bright men, which I uh, hold in high regard and respect because I I rarely miss their programs. They have been my beacon, but after this one, I really had to react. I also, uh, I mean, I'm not always in agreement with them. I've disagreed with other things they've held. Uh, in the past but i do understand that everyone is fallible and i cannot like just start pointing the finger when i detect any kind of mistake because mis these mistakes are common but i thought it was important to clarify this about portugal this this party is not a out of the system party that comes to uh, break the ties with brussels not at all and time will will give me reason will will prove that i am right um, and uh, the immigration maybe has been the biggest aspect. Look, I'll just point you to, to one aspect. Algarve, which is the most south, uh, southern touristic uh, and touristic region of Portugal, uh, was where Chega uh, won the majority of the votes. If you look at Algarve's economy, it's a, a, an economy of rich and poor, basically. It's an economy of... Uh, private property, big uh, hotel conglomerates, uh, big uh, holiday places, uh, huge land uh, land buyouts by, for example, traditional retri uh, retirees, pensioners from Northern Europe, namely England, that go there to spend their last days and buy nice houses on the hills and whatnot. And then you have the population of Algarve that live summer to summer, very precarious jobs, uh, and now they have to compete th these jobs with immigration. Um, and so uh, it's a very, it's, uh, as I see it, it's, it's the kind of society and economy 
that it's very, very liberal-wise, uh, liberal-orientated. And it comes to that. That's the problem with liberalism. Liberalism has nothing to do with freedom or liberty. It has to do with workers losing their rights and having to compete with everyone else for a crumb of bread. And this is why they vote Chega. My town, which has shares similar characteristics, uh, also Chega won here. So people who vote for Chega feel, on the contrary, they'll be working at this moment in time. There'll be the phone calls going on between Brussels and uh, um, you know the and Lisbon, trying to find ways of getting round Chega. Ah, and that's what that. the EU always does. And you're right, in the short term, they win. And unfortunately, in the world of politics, the short term can be very long. It could be five years, 10 years, longer still. But in historical time, when the whole thing collapses and is discredited, it might not be that long at all. Yeah, it, it goes against the entire structure of the EU, the entire no. uh, goals. Of okay, the I think they made that to, point. To centralize more power. Uh, and if you're going to centralize more power under the EU flag and the EU anthem, and, uh, and all of these uh, these EU European uh, things, well, you have to hollow out the nation state. You can't have any type of uh, of sovereign nation state, and then then that's that's the ultimate goal of of the European Union, the the United States of Europe. This absolutely. is where, where, where they want to take things. Well, absolutely. I, you, you can't have a strong periphery. Look, <laughs> Portugal has lost its sovereignty long ago, much longer before Chega came, came to be, came to existence, all right? Uh, if you recall the Troika times where the IMF came and uh, with these predatory loans to demanding uh, workers' rights to be cut off and workers' wages to be cut off and social programs to be cut off and all this uh, terror film, which affected me personally, uh, the, the, they didn't have any platform in place like Shega prepared or here or in many other countries of the south for example Greece as well so the anger was directed to the rational uh, arguments which was indeed realistic they pointed out what was wrong with this austerity policy which were the left wing parties <laughs> and then and, and yeah then of course the government that was to blame at the time for the problem the problems was the same socialist party government so it had to be penalized but people didn't want to move right right they understood that this kind of left was the rotten left but they there was other left they could turn to and they they formed this government called the Giringonza, which is a kind of a clunky machine if you want to translate it to english like an invention that you do in a garage and it becomes a clunky machine because this part is although considered left-wing they never aligned before so they made this to avoid the 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 party which had won by relative majority to become power the right wing the center right as they call it here together uh, with the with the christian democrats and so yeah and that was it and of course um that that is a reflection that the left has to do of those times. I do recall good things of those times, good policies, uh, but somehow it it came to discredit, and I do have any many factors to 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 justify this. But just remember this: the Socialist Party alone had the absolute majority just two years ago. It ditched over time the other left-wing parties that helped them to stay in power. People blamed only these little left-wing parties, the communists and, and, and the left bloc, as it's called, by any mistakes done. And they 
they went back to the Socialist Party, of course, lasted two years. And the result is a lot of arguments to Shiga to arise. I mean, there's a lot to say about this. Look, I'm 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 doing it roughly. Okay, don't don't hang me at, at the first mistake that you detect because there's a lot to say. This would give many hours of program to analyze all those factors and decision making factors that made people choose this this election. It's you can't have a strong periphery. It, 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 and, and, right, yeah. My point is that Che is not what they are claiming that it is. And a party that is nationalist and patriotic and wants to create a strong, you know, to strengthen. Awesome. I mean, it, 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 by definition. Um, patriotic pro-NATO. Mm -hmm. It's unacceptable. And of course, it has to be labelled with all the labels that you were talking about. It has to be called far right, and <laughs> associated with all sorts of things um, from the past. Which, as I said, as far as I can see in Chega's case, that bears no reality to the party that it actually is. It um, does. So, I've, I mean, I, I'm just, just saying. It does. I pointed out in the beginning. Although I, oh, it's not okay, you cannot call it a whole ideology, right wing ideology oriented party. It is a party that has gotten the sympathy of this uh, fringe neo Nazis that we have in Portugal. And this uh, people that miss the past. Saying all of this, but that's that's exactly what the problem, uh, um, the problem that the EU is creating. It is if if it's hollowing out the states, and it is making the conduct of democratic politics impossible, and eventually as happened with transformismo in Italy. Okay, I think now it's enough. Uh, if you want to, I mean, it's only a couple of minutes left and uh, less than that. And I think we heard the, the main point of them. And I, I reiterate that this is, it is not the case. It is not an anti-system party. I mean, if you want to, if you want to see a real protest, for example, Syriza back in the time of the Troika was a real anti-system party. Of course, they did not withstand the the clash with the with the giants of Europe, and they ended up surrendering. If I may say, if I may, if I may use this this term, in Portugal, Portugal made the compromise of aligning with this euro skeptic parties. But uh, bear in mind that no minister of this party made part of the cabinet. They just negotiated very surgical laws and measures to be adopted in the parliament and they in in exchange they would have have to approve the budgets of the socialist party which was by all effects the party that was governing and all the ministers belong only to this party uh, that's one argument that Chega uh, uh, makes is that when you were there pointing to the little ones and says when you were there <laughs> And there was never uh, a, a person in the government from these other parties that helped the socialists to stay in power. Okay, if you think this video was somehow helpful, uh, do not subscribe, do not press the like button, do not follow my channel. And, and der -la, der -la, der -la. I, I, I'm already able to monetize the channel, although I, I haven't felt like doing it yet. And uh, just, just stick around. We'll be doing some work like this and also other completely different work. And just don't go too far away. We'll be here. Thank you for watching.